and you're ready to share your Godot game with the world, you want to create an export for all the various platforms you want your players to be able to play it on. I've got this simple game called High Score Tracker from a previous screencast where you click a button and press it as many times as you can, keeps track of your high score. Pretty basic and simplistic. I want to make it so that this game can be exported and distributed to my friends who are obsessed with clicking. And we're going to go ahead and export it for as many platforms as possible. Let's go. So you go to project and you go to export. This presents you with an empty screen that isn't very intuitive in my opinion. What you do is you want to go to presets and you'll see all the different operating systems your game can be exported for. It needs to be exported for a given platform so that it works on that computer. Games on Mac don't work on games on, Win on Windows operating systems. Linux games don't work on Windows operating systems. You have to export it for that platform. And some platforms require certain setup and configuration. Notably, iOS and Android require a bit more configuration. The web's usually pretty simple. Okay, so we'll start with the web. You click that, and you'll see right away you're greeted with some information pre-filled over here, and then all this red text about export templates missing. What we need to do is first install the export templates. Export templates are basically shells of runnable executables for a given platform that match your Godot version. So I'm using Godot 4.0.1.stable. I have other installed versions, but I need the ones for my specific Godot version. So whenever you upgrade Godot, you'll have to go and download new templates. You just leave it as best available mirror and download and install, and it'll go and download 756 megabytes of data. This is a bunch of files for Mac, iOS, Android, web, Linux, etc., that Godot takes and puts your game content into when it builds your export. So that's one of the reasons why the Godot editor is so small, is because it doesn't include all of these packages that you need. And then you have to go and download them. And it takes a little time, but once you have them and you're not updating the Godot version very much, then it downloads this. So yeah, it takes a, takes a little time. So it's a good time to go have a sip of coffee or go ahead and wait. But I'll talk more about exports while this downloads. So the basic gist of what we'll do is create an export for all our main platforms and adjust some configuration settings and then export them. Then we can take those files, upload them to itch.io or wherever you want to share your game. Certain platforms can't export games for other platforms. Like if you're on Windows, or if you're on Linux, you can't export your Mac OS game. But Godot does some neat things that lets you go ahead and export for other platforms if possible. Like on Linux, you can export for Windows and Linux and web. On Mac OS, weirdly enough, you can export for all of the platforms. <laughs> like, I wouldn't recommend necessarily using Mac OS for game development because the hardware is like, really costly and whatever, but I have Macs for work. And because of that, I can export my game for all the platforms, which is kind of nice. Also, just a shout out, if you're making a game and you want a Mac build um, and you're okay with sharing your source with me, which you know I won't do anything with, I'd happily export your game for Mac so that Mac players can use it. Um, it doesn't take very long and uh, be happy to help you there. But anyway, we've got the export templates downloaded. You see it's changed. They're installed and ready to be used. You just click close. You have to go back up to project, project settings, oops, project export. And now we're back at this screen. This screen is a little bit overwhelming at first, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain it the best I can. So web, that's just the name of what this is called. If we change this to foo, that's fine. You might, it's important to be able to name them because you might have builds that vary based upon the build's needs. Um, Runnable is says this is a special thing for one click deploy where you can like test mobile builds and web builds up here using um, this button in the editor. We're not going to worry about that right now. That could make a good future video. But export path is the main thing we want. So if we click this button and we go to the root of our game, I'm going to delete this. I had cre created it previously while trying to uh, prepare for this um, video. Well, 
it's not letting me. So what you're going to do is I like to create a folder called exports. And then for web, I create one called web. And you're going to name the file that Godot is going to primarily put your game into. I call it index.html because itch.io wants it to be called that in order for it to work. The needs for where you're deploying your web game may vary, so um, just a heads up there. You click save, and it knows, okay, we're going to export our game there. Then there's a bunch of tabs and settings, which might be a little overwhelming, but for the most part, you don't need to do anything with most of them. So you can just leave all these as is. If you hover over them, you'll get more details if there's a description. But like I said, the defaults work. Resources just says what comes out, you know, when you export it. Features, I just leave it as B. And then here's some interesting parts, which is encrypting your PCK. And I want to just talk a little bit about what PCKs are. I don't know what that stands for. I usually think of it as a package <laughs> because it's kind of close to that. And what the PCK is, is your game files. So you have the template that we downloaded, and then we have your game files in the PCK. The PCK is, you know, your SVG and your labels and your nodes and all that information that's easily distributable separate from the binary or whatever, the export. And you can actually embed it if you want it to be, but there's also cases to be made for not embedding it and instead sending a zip to your players. So um, a nice thing is you can encrypt it, which means that people can't go and inspect the files and they become obfuscated. I'm not gonna explain how to set that up, but just know it's possible and uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it if you're just getting started out. So let's go ahead and export our project. It opens up to that folder we created, and there's this checkbox, export with debug. If you were sending this build to someone and you wanted the debug functionality to be present, which I talk about in a different video, you would leave this checked. But for sharing your game with the public, I uncheck export with debug. That removes debug functionality from it. Okay, that happened, <laughs> right? <laughs> that, that's the sort of experience here that's a little challenging is um, it doesn't give you much feedback as you're doing it. So let's go ahead and we'll open in File Manager our project file. We'll go to Exports, we'll go to Web, and you'll see here are all the files needed for our web export, including index.pck. That's our game file. There's some JavaScript and some um, various files here. Now, you're not going to be able to just click index.html and have it run because there are certain settings that need to happen. We'll get into that in a second. So that's the web export. Let's actually go ahead and put that on itch. I'd like to go, or what you need to do is select all your files and compress it. That creates a zip file. That should be possible on every operating system to easily do that. And I'm gonna rename this to um, high score web. And that just says, here's this file compressed for the web. I'm gonna go to itch.io dashboard, and I'm going to create a new project. So this is exactly what you would do if you were creating a project for your Godot. I'm going to call it high score. I'm going to call it high score clicker. And it automatically sets your project URL. Fill out your details. The type of project we're going to have is HTML. That lets our HTML web build be played. But you could also do downloadable if it's only for PCs. And then release status, we'll just make this a prototype. You could do released if it's ready, in development if you're working on it, that kind of thing. And then you go down to uploads, take your file and upload it. You gotta navigate to it. And then you just click upload. It uploads your game. And you click into here, it's leave it as executable. You'll say this will be played in the browser, so itch knows to use that. And then we've got dimensions. You can find that in project settings. And if you go to display, I want to say it is, width, window, display, window, viewport width. I'm going to get rid of this filtering. So it's 1152 by 648. You generally want that to match. Otherwise, it might look a little scaled and funky. There's settings like mobile friendly. Um, which uh, Godot 4's web exports have some issues, so it won't work on Safari, but it might on Android. You can start it on page load, or you can display a button. Um, the button's kind of nice. You can make it so people can make it full screen. That can be nice. And then for Godot 4 projects, you want to check shared array buffer support. This is the fundamental part to making Godot 4 projects that are exported for the web work on itch. 
And then I'm gonna go here, click Save and View Page, and it will go and load our game for the first time. I have my resolution really high, so I'm gonna zoom out a little. Click this button, Load Game, and it's gonna go ahead and load our game. This takes a little time on Mac OS. There's like a known issue with Mac and Godot 4 and how this works. So I'm gonna tab away for a second and um, <clears throat> just so we're not watching that load. And we'll go back here to project. We'll go to export. And um, if you needed to somehow, like maybe you had a web build that was for GitHub, you could go and um, add another web build and you can even duplicate the existing one and you could say like web github and maybe you know then you configure your expert path as needed but for our case web and itch is fine um we're still loading here <laughs> firefox isn't happy we're gonna let it keep going though okay there we go it finally came up and if we click start game and press me you see our game works in the web there's some weirdness with the layout and resolution here so um, that's a little funky, but we'll, uh, you know, that's okay. That's something else to figure out, kind of unrelated to exporting. Then what you want to do is go and add the other platform exports. You set the export path. I don't want to put it in exports web though. I want to put it in exports. And then it says here, all recognized files for, it, it like kind of gives you a hint of what you want to name it. You can make your Linux exports a .zip, or you can make it .x86 underscore 64. Let's just go ahead and call it iScore Linux, and we'll give it the file type of x86 64. That's an executable file on Linux. Save it. There's settings here that are different. Again, the defaults generally work. If you needed to provide certain architecture builds, you could do that here. You can embed the PCK. But again, if you don't embed it, itch.io, if you use their command line tool to upload and um, other places are able to create better patches by not embedding the PCK. So it's up to you. Um, and I'll show you during the export what happens there. But again, we've got more config settings. Some are similar to the web, some aren't. We'll click export project and we'll export Linux. Go back to the finder and you see these two files. So if you don't embed the PCK, this is separate. You could then take it, compress it. That way it uploads faster and your users download it faster. We'll call it high score Linux. I'm gonna make this sort by name. So now we've got our high score for Linux. I'm gonna delete these and show you the difference with embed PCK. So if we embed the PCK file and export the project, Godot takes it and puts it just in here and it's one file and then your players don't have to worry about putting things in certain places. So, you know, it's tough. Sometimes, like, itch encourages you to not do that, basically, but it's pretty friendly for your player to just have it embedded. So use your best judgment. I'd say probably check it, because then it's there. And then you can just compress this one file, and there you go. It's compressed, and all we would do then here is to Take it, go edit our game, upload files, select the zip file, and then when that uploads, we can check the Linux checkbox. We'll go ahead while that runs, we'll add Mac OS. When you do add Mac OS, if you're on a Mac, you just need to set the bundle identifier. It just jumped away from me. Um, we'll set it to com .retrolupa. Wow. It's uh, getting away on me. There we go. Some weird bugginess there. You can set some versions and you can set up code signing and all this stuff that you <clears throat> might wanna do, but just setting the bundle gets us far, gets us far enough. I'm also going to, um, you don't need to embed the PCK because Mac exports have a special um, way that you do that. And you can actually export it as a DMG, but I'm gonna export it as an app so that I can just click that and run it. So now here, if I click that and run it, it goes ahead and runs our game. And then we could go and compress that and say, that's, uh, oh, but it named it um, High Score Linux. But really what I want that to be is High Score Mac. 
you could even just make it high score. You know, name it what you want, and then um, compress it. And you'll see we didn't set the export path, and it went ahead and prompted us and asked us what we want. So that is, um, you know, you don't have to set that, but if you do set it, and we change it to be high score Mac dot app, save it. When we do export all, which I'll show you in a second, this is getting unwieldy with how big this is. Let me try to fix this, sorry. Oh my golly, I'm like fighting uh, low resolution issues right now. Um, what if I click web or Linux just to, yeah, this normally wouldn't be a problem. I have my resolution set to really high so that everything's big and readable. Right, and then we'll add Windows Desktop. Universal Windows Platform, it's not supported in Godot 4 yet, so you can't do that. <laughs> but um, we'll do Windows Desktop. I'll just call it Windows. And that export path, we'll just call it high score Windows. We'll set it to be an EXE. And um, we'll embed the PCK. Click Export Project just to test it. It warns you for something, but uh, you want to install something for certain icon renaming, but uh, I didn't do that. Then you could take it and you could compress it and um, setting it to export to a .zip directly from the Godot export, I found doesn't work with Windows on Mac. There's like some weirdness. So I always just export it to the file like that it needs to be. And then I do the zip separately. Woo, all right. Let's go ahead and delete these, <laughs> even though we just made them all. So. What you can then do is go ahead and click export all and let's delete web. And you can say, I want to export all in release mode. This will go through all of the exports that we just configured. Um, web failed for some reason. Oh, it's because we deleted the web folder. So um, let's go ahead and restart, delete those, export all, release. Don't delete the folder if you have it set to go to a certain folder. Now it completed, Windows had an issue, it wants the RC edit fold, um, executable, which I don't have, but it still works. And now we go here and we have all of our exports for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and web. So then what I would do, right, I would go, I would compress this, I would take it, put it up here just so it's easier to see. Whoops, I'm dragging it to the wrong spot, right? Go back into exports, rename this to be high score web, compress these so that they're smaller. And they, you know, you don't have to compress them, but uh, it's kind of like out of respect of network usage that I uh, generally do. Then now we can go and upload these files and we can upload them all at once. I already uploaded the Linux version, so I'm just gonna grab the web ones. And then here you can in itch set the platform and um, they're all executable so they'll just be there this is this is a convoluted experience that's why i'm making this video because it, it takes a little time to set it up but then the basic gist of what happens is you're working on your game some more you go to project you go to export you click export all you re-export them and then you upload them and uh, that's not too bad of a process it, it it's, and then you can upload them here. That's like the simplest way to do it. And then you can categorize your uploads accordingly and people can download your game and play it. I know there's also the ability to download a plugin for Godot to automatically push your builds to itch. I have written command line scripts and uh, part of Godot skeleton is this template I've made. There's a little script it requires a Ruby, but it handles all that for you, the uh, pushing and building and zipping and stuff. So um, that's the basics of exports with Godot. I hope that helps you kind of get get things working. Um, it takes a little bit of time. It might be a little overwhelming, but you'll get there eventually and have your game be able to be played by other people. All right. Thanks for watching and catch you later. Bye.